Hey, honey buns, it is Jen, and I want to come in and talk to you guys about some business ideas for housewives and stay-at-home moms. For those of you guys who do not know, I recently did a video where I talked about jobs for stay-at-home moms and housewives, so make sure you guys are checking out the video. So let's go ahead and get into it. I do know that some ladies uh, that are a part of the Pretty Money Yang or a part of Pretty Yang, hashtag Pretty Yang in the comments, let me know that you're here. I know that some ladies are housewives um, and stay-at-home moms, so I wanted to go ahead and give some specific ideas that are specific to staying at home where you don't have to uh, get out of the home a lot. You don't have to be away from the home a lot, but it'll be something that you can start in the comfort of your own home. So one of the things is, you guys, you can become a foster care parent and or home. Now, fostering is not only what many of us think where it's just you know you have kids coming in and out of your home and there are all these things attached there is fostering where you do do that right but there is also respite which is pretty much you would be a foster home that's only designated to other foster homes when they go on vacation or when they need you in the case of an emergency so this is somewhere where children may um be at your home anywhere anywhere from seven to 30 days only. This is not them staying at your home or you signing a permanent type of contract or let me not say permanent, a, yeah, a long-term contract for the child to stay in your home. It literally can be you be approved to be a, um, a partner with another foster um, parent and you would just do that when they go on vacation. So that's one thing that you can do. Another thing that you can do is you can become a safe haven. Safe haven pretty much is for children who need an immediate home. And these homes are usually, again, somewhere between 7 to 30 days. But majority of it is 7, which is where a child, um, majority uh, sometimes older children and or very young children, like brand new, um, yeah, younger children, um, you would be a safe haven to them, especially for teenagers right now. It's very much needed. So you could be a safe haven for a home like that. Pretty much they can stay at your home from seven days to 30 days and um, you would just be a temporary home. So that would be something that you can look into foster care. Okay. And a lot of people know foster care does come with some type of payment. Is it, you know, mega bucks? It depends on what type of children you allow in your home or what type of youth you allow in your home, but it's, it, it does pay. So that might be something that you may want to look into. Okay. And then the next thing is a daycare. You can license your home to be a daycare. And the great thing about licensing your home through a daycare to be a daycare is you can get clients through the state and the city. So pretty much you get approved through your state, through your city, through your county, and then um, you become listed and you can go to um, local agencies and our schools and let them know that, hey, you're a licensed uh, child care service through the state or the city. And the great thing is you can get clients through that way as well. And you can get potentially free labor, which really isn't labor. What it is is that a lot of child development students have to do an externship of a certain amount of hours. So you as a child care licensing or a daycare licensing, you would allow one of these students that needed their child development hours to come into your home and do what they need to do in order to get their child development. So it's pretty much a win-win. The only thing that I can think about with this and foster care, when you're dealing with the city or the state, you have to keep in mind that the monies is long-term, but the money in the beginning is not immediate. Most counties and cities, they delay and they take up to three months to pay you. Now, that's a bad, but it's not that you won't ever get paid. It's just that they have to vet up everything first and then you will get the money. So you would pretty much get like a retroactive. So say, for example, you had a child in your daycare and they're through the city and um, the city is supposed to pay you and you're charging, I don't know, five, let's just say $500 uh, every two weeks. So you're charging $1,000 for that child to be there. That city or state may not pay you immediately that month, but say month three, they pay you. You're going to get a check for $3,000 in month three. So you're going to get paid. You just won't get paid immediately. But once that money has started and they have you listed as the daycare, the child care provider, your money is pretty much legit other than things happening with the county or city. Okay. So that's something you can look into, especially if you're a stay at home mom and you want to have your children stay home and do homeschool. That's another thing to think about, okay? Homeschooling 
as uh, a Montessori type of homeschooling, a very intimate group. So you literally can do homeschooling as well. So let's move on to tutoring, you guys. Tutoring is so hot, so needed, because again, you can get this type of approval through the counties, the cities, and the states, because they always need tutors. Um, well, they need two types. They need tutors for specific, um, they need tutors for specific, um, why am I going blank? Okay, let me just say what else I was going to say. They need tutors at, for homework help, right? Because there are a lot of parents who, um, they have their children at the libraries at the school. They have their children at the after school programs. And they hire people to come in and just help with homework, like just to get the homework done. So that's one way. And uh, oh, that's what I was going to say. They're looking for tutors in very specific subjects, and the main subjects is usually math and English, okay? So if you're good at math, you're good at English, you can teach it one-on-one, -on -one, or you can even become a tutoring agency where you go gather up people who are tutors, you put them on your roster, and people call you, and you send other people out in what it is is that you just have a finder's fee. So say if the person charges $25 an hour to tutor calculus, you might say, okay, this person is going to book for five hours. You charge 25. I'm going to say that you actually charge 30 and you take the $5 off the top and that other person actually gets the monies that they charge. Now, why are you a finder fees? Because if it wasn't for you, they wouldn't have gotten that contract, right? So that's something you can do as a tutor agency. And for a fact, I know that this is a legit business that is needed because I started, um, me and my brother-in-law started a tutoring agency um, about five years ago, and it was very good, very lucrative, to the point where we had to start turning around, turning away clients because we had more clients than tutors, okay? So a tutoring agency is definitely something you want to look into. The reason why I love tutoring agencies is because you can get contracted with the school or with the city, okay? And the next thing you can do is that as a stay-at-home mom, if you have a specific type of hobby, okay, you can run a Facebook group. And you're like, okay, Jen, a Facebook group? Okay, first off, you need to go look at my video. Can you charge for a Facebook group? Now, granted, no, you cannot charge for a Facebook group. That is against the Facebook policy. But nobody didn't say you can charge for the events, the printables, or the trainings that you plan to provide inside of that group. So you can just pretty much become a host have specific categories that you talk about, run events, sell printables, digital downloads, and trainings, and always make sure that you're treating the group like it's a support group, right? For those of you who do not know, I have the Facebook group. We have the Facebook group. Pretty Money Gang, go join the group now. That is where I do my what? My trainings. My live trainings are in there, okay? So that's something that you can look into. The next thing that you can look into as a stay-at-home mom or a housewife is being a VA. Now, the thing with being a VA is you want to be a specific VA, okay? Now, what I have listed here are some of the more popular, popular ones as of now. So you pretty much, you can be a virtual assistant for those who are doing social media. You can literally write blogs for people, create tweets for people, schedule people's social media content, Right? Or you can become a bookkeeper, a bookkeeper for, for businesses. Or maybe you can be a bookkeeper for other moms, bookkeeper for other housewives. You can be a bookkeeper now. The only thing with bookkeeping, if you want to do it on a personal level, a lot of people are very picky about who they share their finances with. So with bookkeeping, I would more suggest for you to aim at businesses because a lot of businesses, especially, especially businesses who are um, brand new, just starting more startups, less than 50 employees, they don't really want to deal with a lot of the bookkeeping, getting stuff prepared for taxes, organizing receipts and all of that. But that's where you come in at. You can be the bookkeeper for that specific business and you can be a bookkeeper for a whole bunch of businesses. Um, something else that you can do as the VA is you can be an organizing VA and that's pretty much you organize people documents, you organize their calendars, you schedule things out for them. You can organize for people. And then the last but not least to be a VA is you can be a VA for someone who is a creative. So you might be a YouTube a virtual assistant. You might be a Pinterest virtual assistant. There are so many specifics that you can get down to being, but a VA keeps you in the home. You do not have to um, leave your home in order to be a VA. 
And um, I'm going to be doing a video also about how um, to set up your home office for like success. Because if you are going to be doing a um, home business and you're going to be a stay at home mom and a housewife, you want to make sure that you have access to everything, printers, copy machines, faxes, um, you know, business phone numbers, emails, you want to have all of those things ready so that your business can do great. So you guys, I hope that these were helpful. Remember the last thing is self-promotion is going to be key, okay? Tell people about your business and ask for the sale because a lot of people fall victim to thinking that, oh, I'm just gonna tell people about my business and they're gonna want what I have. No, you have to tell people about your business, let them know how you can help them and segue of that is you asking for the sale, right? Ask them, do you need my help? Do you need my assistance? Is my business idea, if you ever need my business or somebody you know needs my business, definitely reach out to me. So you need to constantly be self-promoting when you are out here starting any of these businesses. Again, that's foster caring. Again, that's starting a daycare, creating a tutoring agency or tutoring yourself, having a Facebook group or becoming a virtual assistant. So you guys, make sure you join in the Facebook group, okay? And I'll be talking to you guys later. Bye, y'all.